a seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet Williams steam locomotive. This one is episode 19. The now fully certified boiler returns to the workshop. I need to make some BSB blanking plugs for it and fit an isolation valve to the steam turret. Note to self, buy some BSP taps and dies. Here's the boiler loosely positioned on the frames, sat on a piece of wood. It is extremely heavy. Eventually, I will lower the boiler down into position and bolt it to my expansion joints that I made. For the moment, though, I'm leaving it loose because there's quite a bit to do at the boiler before I fit it to the locomotive in its final position. This is a shot of the mounting bracket underneath the boiler that will allow me to fix it to my expansion joints. But first, I need some blanking plugs. Two quarter BSP and one three eighths BSP. And I'm currently rummaging around in various places in the workshop to see if I can find any. I do know that I have some in a tin somewhere. In the tin that I've just shown, it just contained BSF taps and dies. I used to have some in the cabinet of my smart and brown lathe. But alas, since I bought this back off my friend, I do remember that I took the taps and dies out of it before I sold it to him. I found this in the bottom part of the milling machine, but it's miles too big. I then went over to the Boxford lathe and opened the cupboard, and inside I found a plastic box that I thought may contain taps and dies, but no, this box is full of Myford lathe tools from an earlier time. Then, under one of my benches, I found a whole tin full of taps and dies, quite big ones too. Sadly, though, none of them are the right size. Most of the taps and dies in this tin are a bit too big, and they are BSF or Whitworth thread form. It was at this point of the proceedings that I phoned RDG Tools and bought some. The only BSP, British Standard Pipe, taps and dies that I currently have are 1 8 BSP. And that is the thread form for the fittings on the turret. BSP threads are a bit confusing. This is very close to 3 8 by 32 threads per inch, but it isn't that. The number of threads per inch on a 1 8 BSP tap or die is 28. The thing that makes the BSP system very confusing is because the size in the description has no bearing on the thread. It's the hole down the centre. The thread on the bottom of the steam turret that goes into the boiler is quarter BSP. But in this case, the hole in the fitting is a bit bigger than a quarter of an inch. This quarter BSP nut that I found in my box of bits and pieces fits perfectly on the bottom of the turret. And you may have noticed that I've sawn the turret in half. The main reason for fitting the quarter BSP nut to this is so I can fit it in the chuck to machine at the end of it where I've sawn it off the main turret. If you're a beginner, I really do recommend not holding parts in a chuck by the thread. Fit the parts into a nut and hold that in the thread. Alternatively, clamp a piece of brass bar in the chuck, drill it and thread it quarter BSP. That would be great if I had any quarter BSP taps. And as I previously mentioned, I currently don't have any quarter BSP taps or dies. That situation should change when I receive the taps and dies that I've just bought from RDG Tools. Here I'm facing across the front and you may notice that it's not running perfectly concentrically, but it will be near enough for rock and roll. This is not a high tolerance component. In between the two parts of this turret, I'm going to fit a steam globe valve. I'm doing this at the request of the boiler tester. It's to isolate the turret from the boiler. I'm going to use a Jubilee Fittings globe valve. And the valve that I'm going to use is one that was removed from my 4.5-inch scale showman's engine. This has a sensible thread on it, quite clearly marked, 9 16 by 26 threads per inch. The tap also gives me the tapping size for the drill that I need to use, which is 13.1 millimetres. I'm actually using a half inch drill because I only have just the one metric drill, which is 16 millimetres in diameter. I enlarged the hole in the center with the half inch drill, then I threaded it, and now it looks like this. After clearing away all of the swarf from inside the fitting, I tried a test fit of the valve. And it's a great fit. Even though the tap that I've used I've had for many years, I don't use this size very often. When I think about it, the largest threads and hole sizes that I work with 
would be half an inch and half an inch by 26 or 32 threads per inch. I'm pretty sure that at one time I did have some BSP taps and dies, but they weren't very good quality and I think I threw them away. I'm about to show something that you shouldn't really do. If all I wanted to do was face the end of this part, then I could put it in the three-jaw chuck like this, but it runs very eccentrically and it's no good at all for threading down the middle. I really don't advise doing this, it's a silly thing to do. I just thought I'd show it in the video because I do like to show things that you shouldn't really do. Time to stop being silly and remove the three-jaw chuck. Now I'm going to show you something interesting. I will put it in as a top tip. Get ready for this, it's top tip time. When I remove chucks from small lathes, that's just what I do. I don't put any protection underneath in case the chuck falls onto the bed. A lot of expert viewers wrote in and told me I should put a piece of wood underneath the chuck so that if it falls, it won't damage the bed. But to be honest, I'm more worried about it damaging my hand. And besides, it's really not an issue on these small lathes. On my larger Smart and Brown lathe, though, the chucks that fit on it are much larger and therefore very heavy. I recommend getting some of this stuff. It's high density foam and you can't compress it very far with your fingers. With this foam in place, if the chuck does accidentally fall off, the bed, or even worse, my hand, will not be damaged. With the four jaw chuck fitted, now it's time to true up the part. This is a bit of a trial and error method. For this component, the guidelines on the front face of the four jaw chuck are very useful. They give you a rough approximation of where the jaws are. For high tolerance jobs using a four jaw chuck, I recommend using a DTI, a dial test indicator. I do it a different way though. This is not a high tolerance component. I rotate the four jaw chuck by hand with the lathe tool at the side of the hole. And here, after a while, when I spin the chuck under power, you can see that the hole in the centre is in the centre. I'm sure it's not going to be good enough for some of the experts that write in, but it's fine for this job. The next thing to do is enlarge the hole. I'm running the lathe slowly in back gear and I'm using the half inch drill. On this part of the turret I've been very careful not to drill too deeply because I don't want to weaken the silver soldered part. In this clip I'm shortening the part and hopefully when the steam tap is screwed into the centre between the bottom and the top part of the turret it should look OK. Once again using the same tap that I used previously which is 9 sixteenths by 26 threads per inch, I thread the hole down the centre. Back now on the bench, and all I have to do is screw the tap in position. And once I've done that, this is what it looks like. By holding the crossbar in one spanner, and using another spanner on the nut, I can really tighten this part together. Time to screw the fitting part of the way into the boiler and have a look at it, and yes, I think it's OK. You may notice that it looks like it's the wrong way around, and you'll see why this is in the next episode. As I mentioned right at the beginning, the boiler has a valid test certificate, some of the details of which are stamped on the boiler. To finish the job for today, I need to remove the paint from the valve. The problem is, this valve has been the steam valve on my traction engine for a while and the paint is quite well baked in place. I'm going to leave this overnight and see what it's like in the morning. And that's it for this episode. I'd like to say, as I always do, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.